if diamonds and other gemstones can be lab-created and indistinguishable from their naturally mined counterparts. Why are we still paying so much for these jewelry stones? Oddly enough, there is actually a huge discrepancy between natural and synthetic rubies, sapphires, and emeralds, among others, but the price gap hasn't happened with diamonds yet. The entire natural diamond world is trying their best to keep prices high though. Really interesting time to be in the industry. The entire natural diamond world is trying their best to keep prices high though. So is the artificial diamond world. Why would the makers of artificial diamonds hope to see the prices of their own product come down? They are all on the same page. High diamond prices equals good. This condenses down to why don't they compete with each other. Usually the answer is they ignore the law. It just takes some time to get the evidence that is good enough to get them to compete. In this case it already took decades. But cheap products should eventually enter the market. They might not be 100% as good. But cost 80% less. Marketing and Monopoly Diamonds are not unique or rare on this planet. The De Beers Corporation has a long-standing monopoly and an incredible marketing campaign stressing that you should spend two months' salary on a ring if you really love your future wife. Truth be told, lab-grown diamonds are so perfect at this point that De Beers is spending millions trying to figure out how to tell the difference. Lab-grown diamonds are so perfect doesn't he the perfect woman deserve a perfect diamond? Don't settle. Demand perfection. Demand lab-grown. Women love diamonds for their multitude of industrial applications. It's like an insurance policy. You know? If the world ends, at least you can take off your ring and grab a hammer and whittle a carbon steel shank. And more practically in the scenario of kidnapping. Do you want a perfect lab-grown diamond in order to break out of a window? Or do you really want to settle for something a little more flawed? De Beers does not have a monopoly any longer. Canada and Russia have taken claim to out their diamond mines. The status of a natural diamond is the only thing that keeps them valuable. The vast majority of diamonds mined are industrial grade which does limit the amount of natural diamonds. Also the fact that De Beers limited the amount of diamonds released to the public inflated the price. A friend of mine had his mother cremated and her ashes to be turned into a diamond. The diamond was later encased in an epoxy that was colored a shade of amber. Is he going to then extract her DNA from the mosquito diamond and insert it into another old lady to create all female versions of his mother who will then break free from their enclosures and hunt down every son who doesn't call his mom enough? I'm an exploration geologist. I don't work in diamonds though. But the statement that diamonds are not unique or rare is a common trope on Reddit and kinda bullshit. The conditions under which diamonds form are rare. They grow at great depths at the base of the Earth's crust where carbon can form in a stable environment to produce a diamond. We don't see many rocks from this depth. Rare examples occur, but in my 20 years I have only visited a single locality where I could look at mantle rocks. Diamonds then need to be brought to the Earth's surface rapidly. Over the course of days in order for them to not start to re-equalize with their new pressure and temperature conditions. This occurs through a sort of weird magmatic eruption in a diatreme-like eruption in a rock called a kimberlite. Kimberlites are narrow, relatively small, do not have a large surface expression. The diamonds are then a relatively minor accessory mineral component within the kimberlite. Then you have to think the majority of diamonds are industrial and not gem quality. I have in my 20 years never mapped, sampled or visited a kimberlite. Real diamonds are rare. Gem quality even rarer. They form under common conditions that we rarely ever see at surface. Diamonds are rare as f if that rarity is something to you then you can place a value on it. However, from the economist's view, diamonds are less rare than other gems. Looking at the issue from the central question of economics. Why are diamonds priced so high when deciding who will produce them, and who will purchase them? Diamonds are rare. 
but emeralds are rarer. Yet the market price doesn't show this to be the case. In a theoretical world, if an item is rare and has a high value then economic incentives say that it is economically advantageous to find a way to acquire the material in a cheaper way. Similarly, if an item has a value greater than its own relative scarcity when compared to competing products, then there is even more incentive to find some way to deliver the product to customers. The original question has nothing to do with how hard it is to mine diamonds or their relative scarcity. The question is why are they so expensive if both the original price is inflated and the market has created an alternative source? In this case, it is an easy answer. Marketing. Monopolies. And misunderstanding that wedding rings are the only competing buyers of diamonds. So you're 100% right that diamonds are rarer than Minecraft would lead you to believe. There's a great reason that in the very few places diamonds can be mined wars have been fought over who gets to control them. However, the economics of diamonds do not follow the existing mining discrepancy. Economics doesn't really rely on rarity to determine value. People demand diamonds far more often than emeralds. So the price goes up. If we eventually collectively lose interest in diamonds then the price will most likely go down. Really strong marketing has created a strong demand for the item. So the producer won't just lower the price because it isn't as rare as another gemstone. There's a very big company that owns almost all diamond mining operations around the world. Diamonds aren't actually that rare or hard to get compared to most other natural materials. The company makes the price go up because they want more money. Because they own all the diamonds no other company can attract customers with a better price. As for why artificial diamonds are still expensive. The answer is they aren't. At least compared to the price of natural diamonds. From what I understand, the new artificial gemstones still require the same processes to determine shape, cut, color, carat weight, a fancy way of measuring how big a gem is and clarity are mostly the same as with natural diamonds. The steps to make it look nice are what you're actually paying for. This usually comes out to less than half as much as a natural diamond of similar quality would cost. Because jewelry shops can get away with massive markups. My uncle was a jeweler for 10 years. He said never buy in store. As they rake you over the coals. When he got married, he made his bride a tiara. Because he worked there. He bought the metal at cost. And they threw in the stones for free. Since they were all lab grown. When my wife and I got married. We bought our rings on Amazon. Rose gold bands with a tungsten carbide core. For less than $20. You really don't need that stuff. My wife's ring was incredibly cheap for what it is, and we still have people today, including highly important people comment on her ring thinking it's not only real, but incredibly expensive. Do I correct them? No. It's all just hype from campaigns to get you to buy the expensive stuff. Lab-grown jewels are so close to the real thing now it's practically impossible to tell the difference, and that's okay with me. Why spend 15k on a ring when I could pay off my student loan debt, or put it towards a down payment on a house? I looked into buying a synthetic diamond ring a while back. It seems to be a chicken and egg kind of thing. First of all, synthetic diamonds are not that cheap. They're cheaper than mine diamonds. But only buy a little bit. Most of the price you pay for a ring is not in the raw value of the stone itself but in markup charged by the retailer and the labor it takes to cut and mount the stone. So the price difference isn't really that great. On a typical $5,000 diamond ring, I'm guessing less than $100 is actually the cost of the stone. Not a lot of room for savings there. So where the chicken and egg thing comes in is there's not a lot of availability. Consumers don't get synthetic diamonds because they're hard to find. Retailers don't stock synthetic diamonds because consumers aren't buying them. It's just easier to buy what everyone else is buying. For the record, I ended up buying nothing at all. We went lab created because of the cruelty-free factor, 
and they have significantly dropped in price over the past few years due to figuring out how to make the process easier. They're also perfectly colored these days. Honestly. The most expensive part of the ring was the metal they used to make it. I love it. The marketing is so effective that even if you know it's just fake marketing. It often doesn't matter. Who doesn't know the whole diamond thing is a scam at this point? But did it matter, even if you firmly state and believe you don't want your boyfriend to give you a diamond because they are a scam? You are still going to be happy when he proposes with one. It's so ingrained in our culture at this point it is a true rarity to fully escape the brainwashing. Nobody gets into the lab-made diamond market to destroy the market. They do it to join the market. The instant they make their first diamond, they have a rock-solid motivation to continue supporting the artificially inflated prices of existing diamonds. So they do. I'm fortunate that my wife never cared for diamonds. So we skipped the goofy engagement ring game. Got simple wedding bands that cost about 40 bucks a pop. And tossed the rest on a down payment for a house. The wedding industry is a gigantic joke for anyone who isn't literally royalty. While marketing is the answer. Let's not forget that a lot of people want and buy diamond purely for its price I. E. To show off wealth. Lab-created gemstones are really expensive to make. Even though prices have dropped they are still $300 per carat.